Hi friends, today we are going to talk about the critical thinking for an entrepreneur, then the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur. So let's one by one start speaking about the things and the contents. So my dear friends, when we talk about critical thinking and creative skills that are required by an entrepreneur, now what do you mean by creative thinking? Now creative, a person who wants to become an entrepreneur is always in a thought process. He tries to build up something new. Now what an entrepreneur does is he brings to a market a thing which never existed or an idea or imagination comes to him. He works on that, creates that entire scenario, creates the machinery and brings it to you. Now in times of Edison, when I say, or in times of Tesla, when you're talking about when there was a fight for electricity, for example, the things had happened very clear now. Now at that time when Edison brought up the bulb, he was very happy for the invention, but there was a huge problem at that time. My dear friends, at that time, you did not have wires, sockets and plugs at your home, no power stations. And that was the biggest drawback for that invention to happen. But he did not stop there. As an entrepreneur, a thinker, a researcher and an innovator, he went a step ahead and he started creating power stations. And then it was Tesla who started and brought the alternate current to this world. That was the biggest gift. And for that reason, the world has become a 24 hours uh, whole day workable place today. And let us be thankful to these two gentlemen, that is Edison and Tesla for bringing that. And the world is able to work for 24 hours, right? Granville, what he did, he just wanted to solve a problem because his wife could not listen. So she was unable to listen to, she was deaf. And what happened? He came up with an instrument that was telephone and connectivity was there and today, I'm giving this lecture because of what that ha what had happened because of his work. It has upgraded so much. So this is what an entrepreneur or a researcher will do. Then he has a power problem solving capacities. Now, critical thinking and then problem solving capacities. My dear friends, there are two approaches, whether I shout at the problems or I try to find out solutions. That is important. So an entrepreneur will always try to find out solution to the problem. Now you see at this time, the whole world has stopped into a lockdown. There are people who are shouting at home, but there are also people who are working from home and they are trying to overcome the situation, right? So those people who are finding out ways have the problem solving abilities and they are driving. These people are called as real entrepreneurs then then we have to recognize the opportunities. My dear friend, with every distress an opportunity also lies. So whether I'm looking at distress or opportunity, that is what is important. An entrepreneur will always look for opportunities and there are opportunities everywhere. The only thing that remains there is, am I busy or am I really ready for that particular thing? Busy in taking up the opportunity, identifying the opportunity or I'm lethargic. So these two things we need to understand and bifurcate. The thing is whether I'm ready, I'm able to see the opportunities or I'm not ready and I'm missing the opportunities. My dear friends, every day there are thousands of jobs that are open. There are thousands of contracts that are there. People are taking it. You are not well equipped. You are not ready. You don't have the resources. You are not, you're not prepared for that thing. So how will you get it? Those people who are working on it have prepared themselves will definitely take away that opportunity. So we have to create opportunities. We'll never get them. We have to create them and we have to get ready for that particular thing. This is what we need to understand from these three points over here. Critical thinking, problem solving abilities that are there and recognizing the opportunities. So what does an actually an entrepreneur stand for that? He examines the needs, wants and problems to see how they can improve the way need and wants are met to overcome the problems. Now, what an entrepreneur will do, he'll identify a problem in the society. He'll try to find out what are the amicable solutions, what can be done to overcome this problem. And he'll try and bring up a process, a tangible process, a workable process, and he'll solve this problem. Only an entrepreneur can do this. Other persons will always only shout about problems. 
narrow the possible opportunities to one specific best opportunity. My dear friends, there are many opportunities out there, but what is the best opportunity you need to try and identify and understand? And that is what is very important over here, that how do I identify an opportunity? The things are, are you there with the skill sets? Are you there with the technical know-how? Do you know how to handle the situation? Then go in for that opportunity. So first, if the opportunity comes to you, don't just don't cling to the opportunity, but see what are your abilities to overcome or absorb that opportunity, to take up that opportunity. Work on that thing one by one. That's very, very important over here. Then think of innovative ideas, narrow them to the best idea. I do have many ideas coming up, popping up every second. My brain is a traffic of full of ideas, but which is the best idea that will ground the roots, that is, will take up, with, take up the roots and be, convert into a big tree. That is what is important. Every idea cannot hold long or good for a longer term. It cannot be done into a business. We need to understand the sustainability of our business. How long can that idea sustain on practical grounds? And that is what an entrepreneur thinks about. So you have to look into the things, the idea that comes to you, how long it will sustain. That is very, very important. Then enlist the best sources of advice and assistance that they find can find. Now you have come up with an idea. Maybe it's the best idea. You feel it. You have a gut feeling that the idea is the best. But how to work on that, you don't know. So go and take the help of the field, uh, experts in that particular field. Meet people. Discuss with them the idea come up with your point of view, listen to what they are trying to say, and then figure out the things that are important to get that idea converted into a big business or an enterprise, right? Next thing is plan their ventures and look for possible problems that might arise. So definitely my dear friends, when I'm talking on an idea, I'm working on an idea, I'm investing my time, I'm investing my resources, I'm investing my money on that, so I need to understand what exactly I need to do with all those things. So an idea with time, money, investment, opportunities, everything is going. So it not, should not go waste. So definitely I have to work on it. I have to beat my idea a thousand times myself. I have to see where all this idea can fail because I'm trying to find out the leakages and when I have to fix those leakages, once I start fixing this leakages, definitely what's going to happen is I'll be working thoroughly on that idea and then only I can come up and become successful in that. Rank the risk and possible rewards. So you have to do a SWOT analysis over here. You have to rank what is the risk that is there, what are the achievements you can have, how far you will benefit from this idea or you may lose on this idea. So rank the possible things that whether you're going to get rewards with this particular idea or not, whether it's better to continue with the idea or drop the idea. Then after that, you have to never hang to an idea, no matter how much you love it. It should have a proper research and show it won't work. So suppose you're not doing a research, you've not done a research, what's going to happen? The thing is very simple, my dear friends if anything that is not done with research is going to fail. And that is why 93% of the business in the world fail because no research is done. It's only an impulsive idea. People start working on that. And at some point they get stuck and there is no way to go and they shut down the business. So you don't have to do it. If you do a proper working, if you have those risk appetites, you know, what is plan A, what is plan B, and what is plan C, what is the troubleshooting that has that needs to be done at that point, then it will be easy, very much easy for you to come out of this problem, right? So we need to understand on all these areas how to narrow down and never hang on ideas. Employ the resources necessary for the venture to succeed. Now suppose you are there with limited information, ideas, and you still want to work on an idea, definitely then employ the biggest experts in the field, pay something, get the shape, thing shaped properly, and then put it on paper, work on that, and then bring it to the market, it may flourish, right? So that is where you have to go into. If you don't have much of the things on your ideas, the biggest example, Ramdev Baba and his associate who was there. So, 
they never had very good ideas about anything. What they did, the best example in the market today, they met people, they worked with associates, they made resources, they hired people, they paid them and see what a brand they have come up with. I don't need to name the brand now, you know it very well, right? And how far it's going. After that, understand that they will have to work long and hard and they, are, they make their ventures succeed. My dear friends, now when we are in job, it's eight to six, but when we are in business or we are into an enterprise, it's 24 by seven. So you don't have any working hours and you want to just explore the things in your business. You want to just expand the business. You want to make it big. You want to make it grow. Definitely something is going to happen. And that thing is, we need to understand one simple thing. We have to work 24 by 7, 365 days a year to flourish our business. There are no offs for a person who's a good entrepreneur. Realize a sense of accomplishment from their successful ventures and learn from their failures. So my dear friends, there are a lot of failure studies. There are a lot of success studies there in the market. First, go and study them. What was the funda behind the success? What was the funda where they failed? Why did they fail? How do we overcome the failures? How can we convert that failure into an opportunity again and grow? So we have to work on all these things before just putting in our money and efforts. After that, we have to learn and understand the pros and consequences of being an entrepreneur. So what are the pros, that is, what are the goods and being an entrepreneur? You enjoy the satisfaction of being your own boss and you have power to do things in their own way. Definitely, my dear friends, you are the sole decision maker. You are the person who's taking the efforts, who's deciding to what extent the efforts need to be taken. Yeah, So that is to be understood over here. You can experience the rewards of ownership in tangible and intangible ways and secure your future by putting aside a sustainable retirement fund. So my dear friends, an entrepreneur can go in many ways. He can be having the ownership, the satisfaction of ownership, then he'll have tangible and intangible ways of rewards. Now what are this tangible and intangible? He may have health, wealth, he may have uh, good fortune, bungalows, cars, properties and everything, these are tangible. Intangible, Things, what he'll be getting is respect from the society, the power, and uh, he may satisfaction what is there. These are the intangible ways. And again, he may secure his future and the secure future of his coming generations. So that is what it is. And he can have a very good old life. So this is where uh, pros are there for an entrepreneur. The last one is you command difference and respect of your immediate family and friends. So definitely if you have made money, if you are successful, your near and dear ones are going to respect you. Your friends are going to be there with you. So you have everything with you when things go that way. Now, what are the consequences? Though you are your own boss, in some respect, you are not also because you are con constrained by various people like financiers, bankers, laborers, customers, suppliers, and debtors. These people, you need to handle them, right? And sometimes you have to be dependent on them. Too. The scope of your operations is limited by your own resources. So more the resources you create, you get a bigger operation. But if you don't create resources and you have limited things, you cannot grow big. So this is what needs to be understood here. All your energy and time has to be put in uplifting the business. There shouldn't be any other thought. Family life may get disturbed or distracted. You may not have good social life. You may not have time to deal with friends. And lastly, though you have the satisfaction of achieving something on your own, everything may not always work the way you think. So these are the consequences. So before going into the business, please go through these points and try and understand what it takes to become an entrepreneur. That's bye for now. Thank you for having the session and uh, see you tomorrow for the next session. Thank you and bye-bye.